Hey, Tyler, Theater Design Company. Going to do a short video today on our top five rough-in mistakes. So these are mistakes we see out in the field. If you're curious on the terminology, so a rough-in or a pre-wire, this is going to be before insulation and drywall and generally just after the electrician's wrapped up. Uh, if you're builder or your AV pro or yourself for wiring, these are uh, top five mistakes you should try to avoid. All right, so let's jump right into this. So uh, five rough-in mistakes. We're going to go over number one right now. Number one is gonna be your electrical power. So talk with your electrician, talk with your builder. And again, this video is all rough-in. So we're not talking about retrofit, we're talking about rough-in before insulation, before drywall. There should be plenty of time to catch this. But uh, number one on power, 20 amp dedicated circuit at a minimum. So if you're putting an AV rack in or you're putting uh, even an equipment rack up front in a, a cabinet or a AV piece of furniture, have a 20 amp dedicated circuit pulled from your panel. That's that's the general you know rule of thumb in the industry. Minimum 20 amp dedicated, and then second is going to be projector power. So if you're doing a home theater room, this may sound like uh, a mistake you're not going to make, but we go into rooms all the time. It's a dedicated room and it's missing power for the projection. It's just, it's just crazy, but it happens. And then the last one on power is making sure that your subwoofers are covered for power. So again. You know, run a 20 amp dedicated circuit to the front of the room if you're putting your AV gear up there, but also get some circuits to the left and right where your subwoofers are going to go. That way you don't have the subwoofer power cords running left and right into your equipment cabinet or, you know, extension cords and whatnot, which you don't want. So left, right subs have power to the left, right. If you're putting rear subs in or more subs, put power back there. Uh, speaking of power, if you're doing home theater seating, you're doing a riser, get some power in the risers. Uh, just think of anything and everything that you might be missing in terms of power because that's going to be your first step because you don't wire your low voltage portion, your conduit, or any of the other things in this video uh, until the electrician's done. So get your electrical done first. That's mistake number one. Make sure electrician's covered. All right, so a second mistake that we see out in the field all the time, uh, we see this on most houses in general uh, in the rough-in stage, is getting uh, network wire. So at a very, very minimum, Cat 5E, um, ideally just Cat 6. Uh, Cat 6 can run almost every res residential home. You don't need Cat 7, you don't need Cat A. Uh, matter of fact, in my opinion, uh, unless something changes in the next year or two here, Cat 7, Cat 8, those are absolutely useless waste of money on your home. Uh, Cat 6, maybe Cat 6A is about the maximum you're gonna run in a residential application, um, albeit you're gonna run some conduit and some future proofing. But in your theater room, you're going to want to have a network at a minimum to your equipment cabinet. And then from your equipment cabinet, you're going to want to have a lead out to your projector. You're going to want a possible lead out to your left and right subwoofers or your rear subs. And then any other network devices in the room. Maybe you got lighting control. So you do a network jack up into the ceiling for like a Lutron hub. Um, even a network jack to your riser. Maybe, you, maybe you're a heavy worker and you want to have a laptop, have a hardwire connection. So... Wireless just doesn't cut it. it. Wireless is not the future. It's still hardwired connections. Uh, keep running wire in your home. It's important. So mistake number two is not getting network into your home theater and not networking your home in general. Okay, so mistake number three. This one uh, should be embedded on every uh, AV forum known to man. It should be a sticky on every AV forum. So run conduit. If you're running a projector, you're running a TV, and you have a remote equipment cabinet, you need to run conduit to your projector. Do not run HDMI cables, period, in the wall. I don't care if they're UL listed, if they're designed for that, run them in conduit. So if you do not do that, you're making the biggest mistake of probably this whole video. Make sure you run conduit. So as you can tell, that's a crucial point. Okay, so to continue, mistake number four on the rough end is going to be not using rough end rings, not prepping your electrical can lights, just getting everything out of place. So when we do a home theater, we want our ceiling lights, our uh, you know rough-in rings for the speakers, our speakers, uh, even our smoke detector. You know we want everything in nice straight lines. We want everything symmetrical, but we also want to take advantage if we can of obviously Atmos locations, DTS locations, and so on. So uh, even your front left, center right, if you're doing in-wall architectural speakers. You know, use those rough-in rings, get them prepped. It's going to save you a bunch of money. Uh, one, on trim. You're, if you're having a pro do it, you know, they got to they gotta take a bag. They got to tape it up to the wall. They got to cut it out, use a template. With the rough-in ring, they're literally just dropping the speakers in or you can do it yourself. So you're going to save a lot of money. So that's a big mistake. And then 
on this same topic, just getting your light cans sorted, get everything symmetrical, draw it out on, on the plans first and get all that stuff laid out nice so you don't have stuff in the way. Obviously, you don't want like a light in front of your projector. Uh, you don't want, you know, a speaker to be where a light should be and so on. So big mistake there is just not getting in touch with everybody, the electrician, the builder, or even the designer. Just get them all in the same playing field so that everything's laid out nice in the room. Uh, use those rough-in rings so you can reserve that spot. Um, maybe even get in there early and put the rough-in rings so you don't have an HVAC guy or plumber, you know, pull a pipe right through where you want a left speaker, for example. So that's the biggest mistake there is just use the tools at hand, use those rough-in rings, draw everything out, work with your builder. All right, so the final mistake here, although I may have a little tidbit at the very end here, but the fifth mistake is just going to be on your uh, rough-in wiring. Uh, generally, just, you know, we go out of these home theaters and we don't see the right wire ran. We're, seeing, we're still seeing lamp cord. We're seeing, you know, 18-gauge wire ran and so on. You know, and maybe 18-gauge will work if you're doing architectural speakers. But if you got some big power-hungry speakers, you're going to need something a little bit more robust. So our rule of thumb is anything architectural, if it's going to go in the wall, or if it's a higher end brand, maybe a Focal or something like that, we're going to run at a minimum a 16-2, a 14-2 speaker wire. In most home theaters, we're going to run a 12-2 or a 12-4. And so the terminology there is uh, the 12-2, for example, is a 12-gauge two-conductor wire. It's going to have a red and a black in it. The 4 is a 12-4. It's going to have a red and a black and a white and a green. So generally, we'll run those if we want something to have a little bit extra oomph. The other thing when it comes to pre-wiring is get your subwoofer wires ran. So if you're going to do like some big clip subs, those take line level in. So run some RG59 or RG6, RG6Q to all your left and right subwoofer locations. So yes, it's cable coax, but a pro can put an F connector on there and convert that to a line level signal. That's kind of the industry standard. That's what you should be doing as well. You can buy those tools online to do a compression fitting yourself. And then last, kind of going into the pre-wire section, you know, wire it for everything. Don't think that you're just going to do 5.1 and run one subwoofer, left, center, right, two surround speakers. If you have the room, you have the space, you know, wire it for some Atmos speakers, wire it for rear surrounds. You know, if the room works for sure, uh, don't don't assume your budget ahead of time. It's, it's going to cost you way too much money to do at the end. Just get in there, run all the wires you think you're ever going to run. You know, speaker wires uh, at the subwoofer locations, kind of another added thing to that. Maybe run two 12 fours to each left and right sub along with RG6s. Maybe you start upgrading and you want some big uh, GSG audio subwoofers that have amplifiers remote mounted. You can't do that with line level. Now all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're kind of screwed. You need to have the right stuff. So prep everything you can think of, draw out a wire plan, use the rough in rings, and then also document everything. I mean, if, you, if you're going to cover up any wires or you're going to future proof it, you know, document it, draw a tape measure out. So it kind of goes over the speaker wiring and then last kind of the last thing i'm going to go over this would be kind of like a mistake number six um, but more of just a tech tip uh saran wrap your wires at your head in so head in like mechanical room or your equipment cabinet if you have a bunch of speaker wires coming out you know seven left center right wires some atmos and network coax I and mean, all of a sudden you got 15 16 18 wires you got a pretty good sized bundle wrap that bundle up in saran wrap so i got a picture here showing you how we do it on a relatively large scale job. We saran wrap all the wires, we label the wires and go from there. All right, so that ends this video. I appreciate you uh, tuning in on it. Hopefully this will help you not make a mistake.